you guys want to know exactly what to do to get ahead in NHL 23's Hockey Ultimate Team, you've come to the right place. In this video, guys, I'm going to walk you through the first steps and where you should spend your time and what things to focus on when you load up NHL 23's Hockey Ultimate Team for the first time. Now, I'm going to talk specifically at launch of the game, but a lot of this will still apply as the year goes along. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel as well for the most up-to-date news tips and info in NHL 23, and come watch me live on Twitch. I stream every single day, twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12 i start at 12 p.m eastern time all right guys let's get into what to do in hockey ultimate team all right guys so i've messed around a little bit with my team i've opened up my starter pack and i've done some things tested it to figure out what is the best way to start hockey ultimate team and i did get austin matthews x factor that i will be upgrading and i think it is a really strong x factor this year so once you guys have your starter team we're gonna leave that alone for a little bit okay i want to walk you through objectives and just point this out real quick because the tutorial objectives are a great way to just earn some free coins all you've got to do is hit x and go down through each one of these hitting x or a along the way and just read each one you'll get some coins and packs by the end of it by just completing them all that's something you definitely want to do but you guys want to know where to spend your time you want to make sure you get an advantage over everybody else well it's going to surprise you i think what you want to do is start in offline challenges that's right offline challenges have changed up a little bit this year and when i say a little bit i just mean what you get rewarded for by playing them has changed it's still mind-numbingly boring so this is for the grinders, especially the no money spent crowd. This is where you want to focus on some of your time. As you can see, I've done quite a few of them. So here is what you guys want to do. You want to go into the X Factor Challenges. This is where you want to spend your time early on, right when you load up the game. And I'll explain why. But as you can see, by doing each of these challenges, you'll get an X amount of coins and uh, some of them will actually have packs in them and you can unlock the next challenge by com completing the prior one you only need to get one star for each of these challenges but i would try to just get as many as you can that way you know you're not missing it on any rewards but as you go along here you will see you will get a premium pack for free it's in group four where you really want to pay attention because once you get all the way down to number five and you complete this one you will get 500 coins for getting one star 1000 for two and then the x factor player choice pack so even if you are someone who is not going to invest in x factors all year i totally understand it they're mostly a ripoff there are a few that are going to really hold their value connor mcdavid's one kale mccarr is another as well as nathan mckinnon i would not recommend going out and spending coins and buying a tradable version but why not take a free shot on getting one right here on top of that you're going to get about twenty thousand coins and a few packs just for starting and you don't need a good team at all you're playing off line on mostly on rookie and pro so having your bronze cards in your lineup is fine as well all right we are looking for Connor mcdavid nathan mckinnon you know austin matthews pretty much anyone essentially not the three goaltenders and shea theodore all right here we go can we pull mcdavid out of these packs uh all right i, I i'm extremely nervous okay here we go let's get let's get mcdavid day one come on Okay, that'll play. Austin Matthews right off the rip. No matter what, this is huge. We will take that. The new Austin Matthews has a speed synergy slot. He's going to get up to 90 speed off the rip. We will take that. Okay, no matter what, that's a huge W. Now, if you've survived that, okay, I would recommend going to the power up icon challenges. These are, again, same kind of situation, but what you're going to get out of here is two power up collectibles. Uh, and at those you can use to then power up your X Factor that you're going to get for free. Again, if you're not spending any coins or, or cards to acquire these power-up collectibles, it's just for free. And, you know, take it while it's there. Now, you can also do the Superstar Challenges. It will give you a bunch of packs. Not really worth your time, in my opinion. It's about 60 minutes of in-game playing. And that's if you don't fail anything and you'll get a bunch of packs out of it. But I don't really think it's worth it unless you are just insane grinding this game. And then you've got Seasonal Challenges challenges will, which will give you 12 more seasonal collectibles i would recommend trying to burn through these but i wouldn't worry about them just yet okay so once you open up your x factor i hope you got mcdavid you know again you can go ahead and upgrade him i would not upgrade ones that 
you know, aren't really going to be usable, like Barkov or Kachuk. And again, if you want to know which X-Factors to choose, I have a video, the X-Factor tier list video that will go through all of the popular ones. But you can go ahead and upgrade all the way up until essentially, you know, the, the base version of the card. Uh, and again, that'll give you a really nice card that you can use right off the rip. Now, once you are done playing the offline hut challenges of the game, if you've survived that... You want to go to Hut Rush. Now, Hut Rush is a great way to build your team early on. Couple reasons. One, you can play it offline, so you don't got to go up any of the, the hardcore sweats of the game. But two, it's instantaneous rewards. Even if the rewards are not all that great, if you go all the way down, completing all of these objectives and getting 7.5 million points, which is a ton, this will expire on November 1st, so you've got three weeks to do it, uh, you will receive a lot of packs and a lot of cards. You'll get about 75 gold players and you might pull something huge for your team. Again, if you're free to play, if you're not spending any money in this game, this is a definite where I would spend my time after I've done those challenges because, again, you might actually pull some cards that you can use in sets and other things. And, again, I'll have a video that will talk you, talk you through all the sets and stuff like that, especially if you're free to play. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. There are a few ways that you can play Rush to get things done a little bit quicker. If you go over here, you will see all of the objectives that will give you about a million points right off the rip. There's two ways to really tackle Hut Rush. You could do it on Superstar. You will get 3.5 times the points, I believe. Uh, it will take longer to do the objectives because you're playing Superstar Sweat CPUs. Or you could do it on Rookie, and it's extremely easy to get all the objectives done and then just play Superstar and just play the game out. So there's two ways to handle that. And then there's also one for the Sarah Nurse version. And again, so you'll be about 2.5 million uh, points into this by the time you're done both of those so you're well well on your way this is going to take a couple hours to get all the way done if you're straight up grinding it but again if you're watching this video you probably are someone that's hardcore and really wants to get a heads up in the game you also receive some coins throughout here as well and i want to talk about coins the reason why i'm suggesting burning through challenges and hut rush first is a you want to build up your team before you go and play rivals online especially if you're not spending money on the game but two, there's no rush for squad battles right now. As you can see down here, season one will end in nine days at the time of this video, meaning that at launch of the game, launch week, you can go the full week. It's not gonna happen immediately, so there's no reason to rush in and try and get squad battles done immediately. You can take your time, build up your team, and then you can have squad battles be a little bit easier for you. Depending on when Rivals resets, I believe it's going to be the same as well. So if it does stay like that, and you've got essentially almost 10 days to complete Rivals, you don't need to rush so i would make sure that you get done the offline challenges and hot rush first now another huge benefit to doing all the offline challenges you're going to get about 60,000 70,000 coins from completing all of the challenges and why that is important is because in the auction house the auction house doesn't have any cards in there right now in the build that i'm doing i'm, I'm a day early essentially but the reason why it's so important is because everyone will try and sell all of their pulls trying to build up their coin stack which is a smart way to go however if you do it too early in the pre-order window essentially before the worldwide launch no one has enough coins to actually buy the cards at the value that they're going to settle in at. For example, last year I saw Connor McDavid's base card going for 100,000 coins because no one had 100,000 coins and everyone was just undercutting each other trying to actually get it. If you can rush out and get six-figure coins before everyone else, you can buy up some huge steals early on that once the worldwide launch happens and no one's ripping packs because all the free-to-play players come out when the worldwide launch happens, you can then sell those back at a huge profit. So building up your coin stack early on is super important and some Something I would definitely focus on. On top of that, any of the cards you pull, hold on to them, guys, because the market has not set. It's going to take about seven days for the market to really set. I would not rush out and try and make a quick buck early on because you might end up selling a card that sits at about 50,000. Again, like I said in, in the example with McDavid, that might end up being 75 at 100. Very rarely are they going to go down. So just keep that in mind, especially with the team builder sets out there. People are going to be buying up all of the 80 overall cards. So you might not know that one team might have 
have nothing to offer on the market and you might be able to make a huge, huge bankroll by just waiting a little bit. So once you have done Hot Rush and your challenges, that is when I would probably start either online or squad battles. It depends on what you find more fun. Okay, this is all about having fun, all right? The grind is over because essentially you are, you are gonna have a lot of days to choose between squad, squad battles or rivals. Now let's say you've got a nine to five job, you've only got a couple hours that you can play in a week. I would probably go with squad battles because early on what you're gonna find is that all of the fantastic players in the game will go up against you and a lot of them that are going to spend money are going to have really really good teams so your online experience might be a little rough especially if you are no money spent squad battles you're just going up against a cpu i have a video that is going to show you exactly what to do to get max points in squad battles as well it's going to make it really easy for you so i would make sure i max out on squad battles get as many points as you can and that way you can maximize your rewards now if you finish squad battles that is when I would take my shot on Rivals, and then I would just keep playing Rivals until I get as far as I possibly can, and then wait for those rewards to happen next week. Let's talk about spending money, though. A lot of you guys, regardless of my warnings about spending money in this game being pointless, you can make a great team by spending nothing, and I'm going to have a video series that will show you exactly how. But it doesn't matter. You are going to still spend money in this game, probably. You want to make sure you do it the right way, okay? Now, if you pre-order the game, you got 4,600 points right off the rip. And now, a lot of you are going to open up, let's say, three of these Jumbo Elite packs because they're the best packs in the store for 1,000 points. And you'll see that there is a quantity of three per day. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to open up three of those, and then maybe you're going to go to an Elite pack, maybe two of them, three of them, and then that's it for the day. That's all, that's all of your packs. And some of you are going to go and buy as many premium packs as you can. These are scams. There is a reason why that there is a header above premium packs that says essentials. It's because EA knows you're not going to pull anything in here except your hamstring. And that is how you are going to siphon all of your points away. So if you are going to spend money in the game, here is what you do. You find the best pack in the store. It's the Jumbo Elite Pack. Okay, what I would do is I would open up three of them. And then it's going to tell you, hey, we don't want you to open up these packs anymore. Think about that, guys. EA is saying, we don't want you to open up this pack. Stop spending money on this pack. Why? Because it is far better than all of the other ones. I would wait my 24 hours, then open up the next one, and you are going to get your best shots at the best pulls. Way too often, people will spend $100 in this game, they'll open up all the special packs that are there, and then they'll burn through $60 in the span of 30 minutes opening up these premium packs when you get absolutely nothing except pack fodder. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, yeah, but you get a lot of packs or cards that you can use in sets. That's phenomenal, but I'd much rather pull Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews base card for a hundred thousand right off the rip all right so i just want you guys to be aware of that if you are going to spend money on the game always avoid these packs just be patient rip your big packs wait until you can open up the next day and do the big packs again Let's talk about sets as well. If you go to the X Factor set, I think X Factors are kind of a ripoff. If you play over the course of the year, they are going to cost way too much to upgrade as you go along in the game. But there are a few that you should chase early on, regardless, in my opinion. One of them is Kale McCarr. One of them is Comrade David. One of them is Nathan McKinnon. Even Austin Matthews and Barzal and Stamkos are good. So what I would recommend is try and do this set because there is a really long cooldown by doing it. So if you trade in 50 gold player items, you can then get an x-factor choice pack it's only one of three you want that shot at Connor mcdavid okay the other thing when you're gonna trade in cards guys especially early on in the game try and trade in non-nhl gold players nhl gold players have a huge value because of the team builder sets we'll talk about those in a second so here is the order of the cards that i would trade in a i would trade in all my untradeables first try and sell your tradable cards again once the market settles and if you want to watch my market monday video i go over all of the best deals each week then i would make sure that there's no nhlers like you see here and then if you're really close and you want to do it then go ahead that's fine but that's how i would do it i would just wait until i get 50 non-gold nhlers that are untradeable and once you get a few rewards a weekend you'll be able to do this and then rip your x factor choice pack i would try and do this one as quick as possible because the cooldown is really long the team building sets i have a full video breaking down all of the team builders there are a couple teams i want to point out though the arizona coyotes there is a new thing where all of the teams require 581 plus 
plus gold player items. There is only four players at launch that are above 81 overall for the Arizona Coyotes. So if you pull a tradable Arizona Coyote that is 81 and above, go and check the market because you might be able to make a killing. All right, so just be aware of that. The other team to pay attention to is the Tampa Bay Lightning because while they are a very good team and have a lot of players that are over 81 overall, there is only a few that are not Steven Stamkos, Vasilevsky, Hedman, Braden Point, for example. And in fact, I'll show you here, if you go over to their team, there is only two players that are 81 overall before you get into Braden Point, who's 83. And he's probably going to go for much more than what the lowest amount is. So if you take a look here, you'll see. No one's trading in Vasilevsky, Hedman, Kucherov, Stamkos, and even Point. So you're going to have to get Kalorn and Sergachevs. These two specifically are going to go for a lot on the market more than likely. So if be aware of that. The other thing to take advantage of is the exchange sets, okay? Jerseys specifically. There's a sneaky little hack that gold jerseys, you can trade in 10 untradeable gold jerseys or really any, for example. So I've got the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Dallas Stars. Let's say you ripped a bunch of packs and you get 10 untradeable jersey cards. They will give you a tradable premium pack. And while premium packs are not good, it is tradable, meaning that you can sell those cards that you get in that pack for coins when you would have just had an untradeable gold jersey. So make sure you are aware of the gold jersey trade-in. Same thing goes for arenas and coaches, but they're a little bit harder to pull and logos as well. The other sets I want to talk about are the silver upgrades. Again, you want to use untradeable players, but this is a pretty good set to do early on because silver cards don't have a lot of value at all even if you just sell them on the market so i've got 10 right here again they're all untradeable so it's not like i'm gonna use them in the market and uh we'll go ahead and do this upgrade the last time i did this i got the uh the game day tilt nick robertson card which is gonna be an 82 overall so we'll go ahead and rip this right in the video and maybe hey we'll pull uh we'll pull something huge here so what do we got we've got matt frazier and all right, Lawson Krause. I got an 80 overall gold player. Actually, an 80 overall Arizona player, which is actually pretty huge. So make sure you take advantage of that set. There's an hour-long cooldown. Don't buy silver cards to do it, but just use your untradables as you get them. Lastly, I want to talk quickly about the seasonal rewards. I would focus, in my opinion, the first month on the X-Factor player choice back if you don't get Connor McDavid. I think one more shot early on is probably worth it. And then this 85 overall guaranteed player pack, if you can rush out by doing all the challenges and getting as many of these as you can, there is not that many cards that are 85 overall and above in the game. So you might get a base Connor McDavid as the player pool starts to increase and all of the cards get dumped in there. There's a ton of other 85 overall cards so if you can rush out and get this done as quick as possible you might be able to pull a huge pull there guys i will have a bunch of videos on the auction house how to make money all of that and gameplay tip videos if you're struggling in squad battles and rivals make sure you subscribe to the channel guys i'll see you next time i hope this helps have a good one